So if you would, uh, turn in your Bible to Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament. If you go to the center of your Bible and find Matthew back up to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, and we're going to begin with verse 1 and read down through verse 10. Malachi 3, verse 1. And I've entitled my message this morning, The Unchangeable God. The unchangeable God. And you'll see in a moment where I got this text from. Malachi chapter 3. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller soap. He shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I make a swift witness against the sorcerers, or drug pushers, and against the adulterers, and against any false swears, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widows and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you're gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I'll return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Then he posed this question. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? And the Lord said, In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And once again, back to verse 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. I am the Lord. I change not. The purpose of this message this morning is to remind us of how great our God is. And why we're nothing without Him. Absolutely nothing. God does not change. Amen. 
He is perfect already. The word perfect and complete means the same thing. He is complete. He is God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What's God's name? His name is I Am. And if you would, turn back, if you would, in your, in your scriptures to Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Verse 13 and 14. God had told Moses to go down into Egypt and lead the children of Israel out of captivity back to their own land. You tell Pharaoh that I said so. Pharaoh was a king. Monarchy. All right, verse 13 says, Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is God's name? And what shall I say unto them? It's real close, verse 14. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. God said, I am, not I was, not I will be, not I want to be, not I may be, but I am, present tense. He was I am of the past tense too, was he not? Because he is eternal. In the beginning was God, and where was the beginning? But with God. God is unlike mankind. Man is fickle. You ever figure that out? <laughs> you, ever, you never know what a human being is going to do. You may knock a chip off his shoulder. If he's got one there, he's probably going to get it knocked off anyway. But man is inconsistent, is he not? And man is corrupt. As God points out throughout the scripture, that we are corrupt. That's why corruption must put on incorruption. And what we will, we have an incorrupt soul but he's going to give us an incorrupt body. That soul, as the song that we sing, shall never die. That soul does not die because it's in the image of God. It's made like unto him. Mankind is selfish. Altogether different then what our God is, is man. But God said, I am God and I change not. And I'm here to tell you this morning that God's love for you has not changed. You may have disappointed him and even yourself many times, 
But God's love has not changed for you. He continually bids man to come to him. He loves us even though we deny him. You remember when Simon Peter denied the Lord? And the Lord already warned Peter, be careful. Watch and pray, he told him. And they came to get Jesus to carry him before the mock trial. And the little woman pointed to Peter and said to Peter was with him. And three times Peter said, I don't know him. And the Lord loved Peter in a way. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you that God's not a respecter of persons. He loved Peter. He loved you. He paid the same price for Peter's sin that he did for yours and mine. Jesus saved people like the Gadarene. The man whose mind was so bad, and I've heard people say that drugs had done it. I, we can't prove it, but in our day, we might liken it to it. Uh, Linda and I, she knew the family quite well. That fellow here last year, matter of fact, this Thanksgiving will be a year ago, went into a Whataburger out here off of Westheimer, naked as a jaybird. Man, 50 some odd years old, wasn't he? Lent about 50 something. Without any clothes on. The police came and arrested him, put handcuffs on him, and five minutes later he was dead. About a few months ago, Linda and I had the privilege of visiting this man's grave in Nacogdoches County where they buried him. But this man in the Gadarene took all of his clothes off and slept out in the cemetery. How'd you like to come across that dude? Walk across the cemetery and here's a Guy here with no clothes on. Jesus saved that fella. He cast the demons out of him. And the man put some clothes on <laughs> and set it to feet of Jesus. Now I'm here to tell you if the Lord could save a guy like that, and you still got hope. The Lord saved the woman at the well. You remember he asked her to drink and she said, man, you Jews don't do what you just did. Ask water of a Samaritan. Finally, the Lord told her, said, go home and tell your husband. She said, I ain't got a husband. And the Lord said, rightly so, you've had five, but the guy you got now is just living with. Things haven't changed much, have they? But she said, she went into the countryside and said, y'all come see a man that told me all I ever did. <laughs> he knew all about me. Folks, the good part about it he knows all about you and me, and he still loves you. Isn't that amazing? Greater love hath no man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. He gives full pardon, doesn't he?
But we read a moment ago that God's going to judge the unrepentant. Look at verse 5 again. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I'll bring a swift witness against the sorcerers or the drug pushers and against the adulterers and against false swears and against those that oppress the hireling. If you don't pay somebody what you agreed to pay them and you, and you cheat them out of it, the Lord knows it. And he's going to bring judgment. And if you take advantage of the widow and the fatherless and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. Well, there's a judgment day coming, isn't it? Man forces God to take drastic measures. And Pokey doesn't get any more drastic when the Lord said to Noah, Noah, I've had enough. I'm going to destroy man from the face of the earth. God had had enough. And folks, you can't push God too far. The people in Noah's day did. He said every imagination from his heart was only evil continually. And he did everything evil and wicked man did in those days that he could think of. But God said, okay. No, I'm going to start over. You and your boys get out there and build an ark. Y'all know the rest of the story. You know, man might Escape the laws of men, but you don't God. Verse 1 we read a moment ago, and I'm going to read it again for emphasis sake. Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Said he's coming suddenly, doesn't he? And who shall abide? Folk, his coming again is definite. It's our blessed hope. He's coming to take vengeance, and vengeance is his. Amen. Everybody, if you had your TV on this week, or had a newspaper or anything, you look at one of the trials that they finished this week after two months. A fellow named Haskell took a gun and killed a man and his wife and his four children. A little four-year-old, seven-year-old, nine-year-old, and a 13-year-old. And he shot the 15-year-old girl, and she played dead so he wouldn't kill her. The man said he heard voices that told him to kill those people. You know whose voice he heard? His name was Satan. And our Lord's going to put him down. He's going to bring vengeance. You know, the courts might let something slide, but not God. The good part about it, he said, but if we confess our sins, didn't he? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So our sins are either covered by the blood of the Lamb or we're going to answer for them. 
Either are. But our Lord is coming again victoriously to establish his kingdom. What a wonderful Savior we have in our Lord. Scripture tells us that our Lord's coming back to the place called Jerusalem. He's going to sit on the throne of David and rule and reign on this earth for 1,000 years. I believe it literal. I don't believe it figurative or anything. I believe 1,000 years is 1,000 years. And it's going to be peace on the earth such as the world has never known. Now, folk, isn't that the best news that one could get? You think of your loved ones and those that's already crossed over. And knowing that we'll have a thousand years to catch up on things. <laughs> but what about the thousand years when it's over? Well, the Lord tells us when a thousand years are over, there comes the time where our Lord's going to destroy his enemies. And they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And they'll be tormented, tormented day and night. Forever and ever. But that don't have to be, folks. Our Lord has shed his blood for the sins of all mankind. And if a man rejects the blood of Christ, it's not Christ's fault. 